After a recent video where I looked at creating blob B shapes using border radius, I got a tweet that was asking me about how we can create this type of effect with like these edged corners with a border because it's not so hard if there's no border involved. It seemed like an interesting challenge so I dove in to see what I could do with it and I'm pretty happy with the end result which you can see on the screen right now and if you think this looks cool and you want to see how I did it, well stick around, you're in the right place. Hello my front end friends, thank you so much for coming to join me for yet another video. And if you're new here, here at my channel I help you learn how you can fall in love with CSS. And today we're going to be doing that by creating that button effect and we're going to be starting with not very much. We have a nice blank screen or blank button to be dealing with with no styling on it whatsoever. Uh, just have a button centered on the screen and we're going to build the whole thing out from here. Now one thing I have done is just throw in a really big font size on here but we've also made this responsive so it will adapt to the screen less so for like realistic situation but more to make sure that all of this can scale and can work as well and it's not just this one thing that can work in this one situation I'm giving we want it to be adaptable and everything along the way uh, so the first thing we're going to do is let's go into here and select our button uh, which is where all the work is going to happen or all the magic is going to happen and there's a few things we're going to set off the start with some custom properties and these are going to be locally scoped properties not in the root if you'd prefer to have them there it wouldn't make a huge difference uh, but let's start by choosing a background color and for this one I'm just going to use white because uh, it works well but you could set any background color for your button you want and it makes it easy to change because it's going to be a custom property here and you'll see why this is important as we go through. Uh, I'm also going to choose a border color and yeah I'm going to use a linear gradient gradient and I usually go with this so to bottom right and we're going to do a red to blue. So that's nothing too complicated right there. And you know what, while we're doing this, we can we can shrink that down so you can see all the code <laughs> and so we don't have to side scroll at all. Uh, another one we're going to throw on here is going to be my border width. And for now, I'm going to start with a 0.5M. Uh, we could even like change this M away to something else, but uh, technically you could go away from M and use pixels or use other things. But as I said, you know, my font size can adjust and, and scale and everything. And so using M here is pretty important to making sure all of this is adaptable and can scale. Uh, and the last thing we have our border width and we're gonna have our edge size. I don't know a better term to give that. If you can think of a better name, uh, let me know. Or, you know, you could always switch this out in your own code, but this is like how cut the corner is going to be basically uh, once we're done doing that. And with those custom properties set, we can come in and start actually styling up our button. So the first thing I'm gonna do is a display. Often on buttons, I use inline flex, but in this case, I'm gonna use in, inline grid, just cause it's gonna let us save a couple of lines of code uh, in a little bit. Uh, and basically it just means it's a grid item, but it's inline. So if you had multiple buttons, they won't stack on top of each other. They'll go next to one another. Uh, let's come in here with some padding. And once again, I'm gonna use M for my padding here and we'll do 1.5 M. These numbers could change. Maybe these could even be custom properties you could play around with but by using M here it just means that everything is scaling around with my button which is what I want just like my border width and just like this edge size are going to do. I often get questions about when I'm using <laughs> rems or when I'm using M's. Rems are what I use most of the time especially for font sizes and for set values that I need but if I need something to be able to scale with a font size so my padding is going to scale with the font size of my button for example here uh, that's when I'm going to use M instead. Uh, if you're unclear with units and which unit to pick in what situation, I have a video that is dedicated just to that. So there should be a card popping up and I'll link it down in the description as well. Uh, let's put a border of zero on here. We're going to need a border, but we're not going to use an actual border. So we'll do a border there. Uh, we need a background color so we can come in with our background color. Uh, and actually what I would suggest, I was going to do... Uh, I usually say don't use the shorthand and to actually use the longhand for things like background. In this case though, I'd actually say to use the shorthand because then let's just come in and do our uh, background color. And it comes in, but it's white, so we can't see it. But say I came in here and I did red, a single value would still work. But if you did come in here with a linear gradient, uh, gradient, black, white, whatever, uh, it's, it's also going to work. So it just makes this uh, background color here a little bit more versatile. Maybe even here we just say background then. Uh, we'll switch that out on the fly and then this to here and we can put this back to white. Uh, and that was where some of the fun stuff starts. Um, you know what, actually for now, let's start with this being a different color. I'm gonna just do a uh, number, we'll just do a 333. We won't really be able to see the text, but that's okay. 
uh, because I do want to come in with a clip path on here and we won't be able to see the clip path until we have it. Uh, now clip paths are a little bit funky and they can be really hard to create on your own. So for that reason, I really recommend using this clippy clip path generator. Uh, and in this case, we can go over to the bevel one here and it gives us the bevel. Now, if you wanted to actually do four corners like this, you could take exactly what we're doing here uh, and level it up a little bit. Um, but what I'm going to do is actually going to delete a point there. I can click on this one, delete that point there and sort of get this shape going on. And I'm just going to come down here and copy that. I think when we click here, it copies it anyway, but we'll copy that. And we're going to bring that down here for our clip path. And what we're going to do is you can see it's sort of giving us the right shape that we want. The issue with it right now is that it's all based on percentages, which it then it, it like the, the shape of the corner really depends. So if I do click me right now, you're going to see that it's going to stretch that top part out and it gets even longer. Or if we just had the word click, it swishes it a little bit more because it's percentage based. Usually a big fan of percentages for these things, but in this case, uh, instead of using this, I would do a 0.5 M and over here where my 80% is, we would have another 0.5 M. Um, and you can sort of see things are coming together a little bit. Uh, actually, I think I broke that one, but <laughs> we'll fix that in a second. But that's why here is this edge size variable. So on this polygon that we have right here, we can make this a little bit more readable. And I'm going to explain a little bit of how this actually works. But one way you can do it in CodePen, I'm a little worried that Prettier might kick in here <laughs> uh, when we save at one point, but we can go a while without saving. So but basically what we have here is a whole bunch of values. This first value is the first point that's going to be on our corner right here. So we're taking the first first corner. We're going to this point that's right here. We're actually saying go over by 0.5. So it's taken here and it's moved it over to 0.5. And then we have the 0% here is how far away from the top it is. So if I did put like one M here, it's actually going to move that point down. And then we want that to actually be at zero. So it stays stuck to the top. This next point is at 100%. So go all the way to the left side, 100% of the way over and then go zero down. So it's going to be stuck right there. And then here, this is actually where I made a mistake because we're 0.5 down. I actually want to be all the way down and just moved up a little bit. And I think that's where the original was at 80%, but we can overcome that problem um, and we can tell it to be that far. So to be able to, to, to do this and to make it work where we can just modify that one custom property for our edge size, we can come in and for this one, it's nice and easy. I can do my var and I can just write edge size. And anywhere that had 20%, we can use that same value. So I can take that and also plug it in right here. Now, the interesting ones are these ones that were at 80%, because what for these 80% ones, what we're going to do is we're actually going to have to wrap them inside a calc. We can say 100% minus edge size. And so it means it's going 100% of the way down, and then we're moving back up that edge size variable that we created right here. And so now I can actually just take this whole calc, and I can copy and paste it right here. And now look at that, it looks pretty good and <laughs> it has the shape that we want. One thing that's a little bit weird is this point here is actually this one right here. And then the last point over here is the one that's over here because we're, you know, we're going this way around. But because we start in the top right, I actually think it's a little bit easier. This one here is the first point. And luckily we can just do that and switch them around uh, and just make sure there's a comma there. Uh, and so now what it's doing is it's taking the first point and it's moving it down and then it's taking the second point and this is now the second point three, four, five, six. Uh, and if you want, you know, you can come in here and add comments and say like, um, left one for this one. And it might be a little bit strange to put in comments for these, but, uh, I'm telling you now it can actually be really useful because this is going to get more complex soon. Um, so I'm just going to do this really fast. So I'm just going to go through and add comments to this really fast and I'll see you in just one second. All right. So there we go. We can see that uh, that's there. My comments are here that just make it a little easier if I do need to make adjustments. Now where things get more interesting is this next step where we're going to come and create a new selector. And this is where sort of the magic happens, I guess. We're going to say button. Uh, we're going to do our before and after. We're going to be using these for different things, but let's come in and do both because both are going to need to be a content. Uh, both of them are also going to need a position of abso absolute and both of them are going to need an inset of zero. If you haven't seen inset of zero before, it's the same as saying top, bottom, left and right all of zero. Uh, you can use it like a shorthand like margins as well, where you can put out multiple values all at the same time. Now what we'll do is let's come on my uh, button four only and we're going to give this a background 
And just like before, I would suggest doing this as the shorthand background and not the longhand. So you can do this as a gradient or you can just do it as a solid color if you prefer. And this is where we're going to use our border color. Uh, and you can see there it is. My gradient is coming in right there. Awesome. Uh, it, you know, kind of cool, right? And it's covering my text. So covering my text obviously presents us with a problem. And I'm going to do a Z index of negative two for a very specific reason. And there's one more thing with this negative two. Um, and because we're throwing a Z index on here, whenever I use Z indexes with pseudo elements, I always like coming and doing an isolation uh, on the, the parent here. Um, and actually we probably, hmm, maybe because of this is grid, it's working. Uh, I could be wrong on that because one thing I never did on here, which I thought I would have had to have done is a position of relative. But we're gonna throw it on here just to be safe anyway. Um, oh, there actually, okay. So <laughs> see how the colors changed? Before I did my position relative, that pseudo element was actually filling up the entire viewport, but because we have a clip path on there, we don't see the entire thing. The position relative now means that inset zero is actually for the button itself, so we're pulled in a little bit. That makes a bit more sense now. Uh, and at the same time, you could do an, a Z index on here, which will create a new stacking context. Um, I'm actually just gonna do an isolation of isolate. Um, if you've never seen this before, all it's doing is creating a new stacking context with no other side effects. And the nice thing with that is the stacking context means this negative two is relative, or it's, it's encapsulated within this button rather than being a Z index on the entire page like you would normally expect. Um, so yeah, we're, we're creating a stacking context. We're limiting the negative numbers or positive numbers, whatever, to what's inside that button. So in, in a way, things are scoped to my button now rather than being Z indexed anywhere on the page that we want, uh, which is a good thing. Um, so there, that, that's what will eventually be our border. And you're going, well, Kevin, how do we turn that into a border? Good question. This is where the fun comes in, where we use a uh, the after that we have right here. And this after is going to have a background. And what this one is going to be is my var background. And you can see it's taken that background color that we'd originally set. Once again, it's covering the text. So let's throw a Z index on here of negative one. And that's why this I put at negative two because I wanted to make sure this one could go on top of the other one. Um, and actually with all of this, the background being set here is a little bit less important. Uh, what I'm gonna do though is set this back. Uh, maybe we'll do a light gray just so we can see that it's different from this background color over here. Uh, and eventually we can put that to whatever we want. And where this is where the magic happens, but also where things can get a little bit complex. But we're gonna keep it really simple at the start and then I'll build on top of it that makes it a little bit better, more usable, I guess, is the best way to explain. So the, what we're gonna do is I'm actually gonna take this entire clip path right here, copy it all. We're gonna bring that clip path onto the after here. And we're gonna make a small change, a few small changes to it. Um, right now it, it, it's lining up exactly so we can see it's hiding it's, it's the shape of my button because it's using the same clip path. But say I came on this uh, one per zero percent, I should say, and I made this one M. And just for fun, let's make this, or you can see a change already. Uh, and I make this a one M. You can see, you know, we, we've moved a point down and it sort of changed how things are happening. So the idea is what I want to do is we're creating like a, a fake border by using these two layered pseudo elements, one on top of the other. So we're, we're actually going to come in and do a lot of this with a custom property, but just to make it a little bit more readable to start with, I'm going to come in and, and put in a few set values here. Uh, so here, if I do the 0.25, you can see it's moved that point over a little bit. And then we can do my, remember that was this one here. So we've just moved it that way. Then I'm going to come to the second side here. So we've moved it over. Uh, let's just do the zero. Yeah. So we'll come to this top one and we want to move it down. So I can do move that down by 0.25. Look, we're getting that like edge right here. Then we want to come over to this corner. So my top right corner, this zero can get moved down a little bit. Ah, better, right? Now the problem with 100% is that means it's all the way at the end. So we're going to come in here with another calc and this will be that minus my 0.25M. So there we go. Then here, so anywhere we had 100%, now I can come in and switch that over for um, this. And when I say anywhere, I include these 100% that are already within calcs. Now, because this is already in a calc, you can you don't have to do another calc. We can just do a minus 0.25M uh, and it's going to work. Then over here, we can do the same thing, minus 0.25M. Then over here, we can throw in our other calc. And over here, we can throw in our other calc. And I forgot this last one right there. And that should give us a border that goes all the way around, except I obviously mucked something up. We forgot a closing. No, where did I make a mistake? Ah, here, we don't want that. 
Oh, uh, we did want that. It was 100% minus 0.125. There we go. And now you, you'll notice it's not perfect, but it gives us that idea of having this border that's sort of cut out of everything. Uh, the issue that sort of comes up is the thickness of this. Like this one's actually too thick. This one's too thin. Uh, and it took me a while to figure this next part out. And you might be going, Kevin, this is a lot of setup. And it is it is quite a bit of setup. And you can see it, at least it's responsive. Um, but the nice thing is because we are going to be setting this and switching a lot of this out for custom properties, it means that we don't ever have to come and look at this again. We can, we're going to be able to control absolutely everything just with these four values right here. So don't worry too much if it looks really complex at this point and it, it's going to get more complex, but the use of it is very simple. And what I'm going to do in a one way to simplify it is, and this is where these comments are going to help because these are going to be long with the custom properties. We're going to take this guy off of here. And this is where we're going to use my var border width instead. Now, as I said before, I think my border width was a bit too big. So these numbers are going to be kind of big. So let's come up and actually change this border width will be a, uh, we'll try 0.25 and we can play with it from there. So there we're going to have my border width and then we're going to have my edge size here. And the reason this is an issue is because we don't want these to actually line up the, the inner edge needs to be different from the outer edge. This part took me some playing around with. Um, but what ended up working well for me, I'm going to do a calc around this. I'm going to say edge size plus var border. Um, and you can see that's actually like moved it down a little bit like that. And then I'm going to do a times 0.25. And it sort of just brings it back. It's making like this border width, like you could even wrap all of this like that because we're doing order of operations. Um, so basically, I just need my border width to be a smaller number <laughs> um, to make this actually work. I had to play around with this number and then I found something that seemed to work really well at a lot of different sizes. I wish I had a better answer for you, but it's basically, let's go to our edge size, but then suck it back a little bit. And here, let's just, we'll switch out a few more of these. So anywhere I had my edge size, I'm going to put this. And then anywhere I had my 0.25, we can say it's my border width. And again, this starts getting to look really messy. But see how this corner now, we've done these first two and see how like the lining up of them is a little bit different. Um, and just to show you actually, like if I bring these down to a 0.125, it, see how it adjusts the thickness there a little bit. And if I bring them up to like a 0.5, the, the thickness here is going to adapt. And actually the 0.5 looks pretty nice. We'll stick with 0.5 maybe. Um, so it's all about just like trying to match the width all the way around. And I found this happened to work well. Because again, if I didn't include this, it just, it led to these parts being thicker than the up and down parts, um, and uh, which is normal. So anyway, the times 0.5 seemed to get me to where I wanted to. So we'll stick with that. Um, all right. So as I said, things get a little bit complicated. So that's again, why I'm putting one value per line rather than stringing everything together. So here, so let's copy my var border width. And that was anywhere I had the 0.25. So now on our top right, we don't really have much to change, except we just want to bring in the this value and this one to be our border width. So that stays consistent. Then we get down to here where things get a little bit more complicated again. Calc, that should be OK. Uh, and again, we'll leave this on two lines just to be more consistent. So here we have the first corner, which is here, and then that other one, which is down below. And this is where we need to get in with this funky guy here in a few spots. Uh, and even though I've played with this, you can see I'm, I'm still trying to wrap my head around exactly where to place these things. Um, but it's any, where I have this edge size, I'm going to replace it with what we had there because that's what got that to be closer to what we wanted. And then here, I think all we have to do is bring in my border width there. This part we want it to move. So it's in the right spot, like left to right, but it needs to go down more, which means... Um, so that should be... Oh, <laughs> I have... The minus two five here, which I think is mucking it up. So that should pull it down. There we go. Um, you'll notice I do have nested calcs here. It shouldn't cause any problems. And I find it just easier to copy and paste. Um, OK, so that this one's in the right spot. So this one needs to go over a little bit. So let's a look at these two. What I should have done is maybe copy and pasted things a little faster. But here we have this one, which probably is the same thing. Mm, let's try. Ah, it was OK, good. So that one's in the right spot now. Uh, again, here we have a 0.25. So the 0.25, we always want to switch that out for our border width. Um, and then here, we probably can't just do that, can we? Maybe we can. I think maybe we can get away with that on that corner. It worked. Okay. So again, a lot of work, a little bit complicated. You can check out the code that's linked in, in this video if you just want to copy and paste it. But what's nice about that now is uh, here, if I change this, all of them are going to update. 
if I make it a point uh, one two five, everything updates. And that weird calculation with the 0.5 is what's enabling it to actually just be something that, you know, it, it seems to work at like, well, 15 is going to be too big. But uh, even if we make it like even as it's getting thicker, things line up pretty nicely. Uh, or as things get really small, things still line up really nicely. So it, it happened to just be the right calculation on there. Um, and then the edge size, of course, we can also change this. So I could make this a really small uh, edge if we wanted to. Or we can come in and make that a, a oh, should, is one going to be too big? Eh, one even works on that. And they're both M's, so everything can scale uh, nicely as well, which is perfect. Now, one thing that I do want to change still, and we're not done yet, is to have some sort of hover effect on here. So actually, I think we can change this back to a white. Um, and then what we're going to do is let's come down. That's my after. So my this is where the fun continues. Button, hover, and we could do a button focus. Um, and on both of these, actually, we can do a, or you know what, let's do this the, the more fun way. Button, where, hover, focus, after. <laughs> uh, so the where is the same as what I had before, basically, but we can do it like this. Modern CSS is fun. Um, and we want to change the clip path. And this is where we get to play with the clip path more. So let's come here and just do transition of clip path. And we'll do 500 milliseconds for now. So what do we want to do? So this is where <laughs> these comments are really going to help us out because we don't want to touch the right side. We only want to change the left side. So the left side, remember the first value is, I don't remember the first value. Let's just put a number here and see where it moves to. It was already one, what's two? Oh, we need to, we need to hover, Kevin. So we're moving that way, which is exactly what we want to do. So here we actually want to go all the way over, right? Or almost, we'll have to change this in a second, but we want to shoot all the way over to that side. So let's say I do that there and I do that, I think it'd be this one then, 100%. When I hover now, those will both shoot all the way over to the other side. So we get like that swiping animation that comes in. The only thing is we can't do 100%. We're going to do a calc um, of minus our edge size, 100% minus our edge size. So we don't get that weird overlap that's going on. You can see like when we have an overlap, it's kind of awkward. So we should be able to use that here and here. Oh no, not edge size, border width. Sorry, border width and border width. That would make more sense. So now when it moves, it moves all the way over. And now we can just do that again for my bottom left value that's over here where this one become the exact same thing. Let's copy, take that first value, put it over. And so now all of them should slide on over. Uh, we do get one issue. You can see it's actually going to the wrong spot. I want bottom right two. The, this, I'm just gonna copy this. I want these two. The bottom right two and the bottom left should be in the exact same place. So that makes that a little easier. And then we just need to take that top, the top right actually, now the problem is the top right, we need it to actually line up down here. It's not, it's stopping here because we're just, we moved it all the way over, but we also need to move it down. Um, oh, I think actually we want it to be the same as this point right here, bottom right one. We want it to line up with bottom right one. So top left one can be the same. That should, there we go. And it scoots on across right into there. Uh, and since we're already here, we can say that my button where hover, focus um, has a color of white. And again, that, that could be a custom property just so we can actually read our text. We can come all the way up to here on the original button, do a transition of color over maybe a little bit faster of a time. And there we go. And if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more where I go into tips and tricks and fun things you can do with CSS, I put a little custom playlist together here that I think you'd really enjoy. And with that, I'd like to say a very big thank you to my supporters of awesome over on Patreon, Dan, Johnny, Patrick, Simon, and Tim, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner on the internet just a little bit more awesome.